Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to add these square roots without the aid of a calculator. So the, again, the problem is not get your calculator out and get a decimal for the square root of 20, and then get another decimal for the square root of 45 and add those up. Of course, I know you can handle that kind of problem if you were going to use your calculator. But what we're going to do in this problem is use our algebra knowledge and our knowledge of square roots and radicals to simplify this uh, problem, i.e. adding two square roots or two radicals. So if you can figure this problem out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then of course I'm going to explain step by step exactly how to do this problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find uh, a link to it in the description below. Also, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. Again, put your calculator away. It's certainly a place to use your calculator, but here we're going to want to use that calculator in between our ears, that supercomputer that most of us just underestimate. We just don't know how powerful this thing is. It will be any AI out there. It's not artificial intelligence. It's actual intelligence, right? It's not artificial. This is the real deal. All right, so let's go ahead and get to work right now, but before we do, let me show you the answer. Okay, so the sum of those two, uh, those two square roots is 5 square root of 5. That is the answer I'm looking for. Now, if you got that right, that's excellent. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you were able to add up two square roots without the aid of a calculator. They'll be like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. How did you do that without artificial intelligence? You just tell them, listen, I just used my brain and some math skills and I was able to do this problem. So this is not that difficult. And let's go ahead and get into it right now. All right, so what you need to know is um, a couple things here. First of all, you got when we're adding square roots in algebra, okay, and this is kind of stuff you learn in algebra, although we don't have any variables here, you kind of want to think of uh, combining like terms. Let me kind of back up here and kind of show you what I'm talking about, just to be kind of crystal clear about this. So if I have 2x and I want to add this to 3x, now if you know basic algebra, we can add these terms because these are like terms. They both have an x, so what we need to do is simply add the coefficients or these numbers. So if I have 2x's here and 3x's here, in total, I have five X's, okay? So I can add these because we're talking about the same thing X's right here, correct? All right, now, if we have this situation, 2X squared plus, or sorry, 2X plus 3X squared, now, how do we do this or how do we add this in algebra? Well, we can, okay? Because this over here, this is 2X's, and over here, I have three x squareds. Okay, so over here, I got a couple x's hanging out. And then over here, I got an x squared, x squared, and an x squared. So I can't really combine the x's with the x squared, so there's nothing I can do here. So you want to kind of keep that in mind because this concept of kind of combining like terms is exactly what we need to do right here. So before we could do this problem, though, we need to simplify these square roots. And this is another uh, very important skill that you need to be able to look at, like the square root of 20. And it's kind of like simplifying as in reducing a fraction. We want to write these things in their simplest form. Now, I'm kind of talking about multiple skills in this particular problem. Uh, by the way, if you're a little bit lost already and you're like in any sort of algebra course, definitely check out like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can, you know, really get further into this. But let's take a look at the first thing we need to do before we can even uh, determine whether we can add up these two square roots because they're not in their current, they're not written currently in their uh, most simplest form. Okay, so what we want to do is look for perfect square factors. So in other words, the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 5. Now the square root of 20 is also the same, the same thing as the square root of 2 times 10, but we're not so interested in factors like 2 and 10 or 1 and 20, things like that. We're looking for perfect squared factors. Okay, now what are those? Let me just kind of back up here and show you. I just can't 
uh, control myself when I start explaining this because I'm thinking there's probably someone out there does doesn't know what I'm talking about. Perfect squares are numbers like this: four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, thirty-six, on and on and on. These are the kind of numbers you want to look for. Now, why do you want to look for these perfect square factors? Because when you take the square root of these lovely numbers, you get a nice little whole integer like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Things that we can do without our calculator, okay? But these numbers here, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, these are perfect squares, right? Because when we square 2, it gets perfect. It's perfectly written as four. So we want to be on the lookout for these type of numbers: four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, thirty-six, etc., as factors in these numbers. Okay. So the square root of twenty, I can write as four times five, and we love that four because that's a perfect square factor. And forty-five, we can think as that as nine times five. So four and nine are both perfect square factors. So now, what do we do? with this current situation. Okay, so the square root of 20, again, we can write as four times five, and the square root of 45, we can express as nine times five. But here's the deal. There is a property in square roots that says that you can have one big square root over uh, two or more factors, but we can actually break up this big square root into individual square roots of the factors. That's pretty cool, right? So you can go square root of four times the square root of five, or I could just write the square root of four times five. Now, writing it this way is gonna be much more helpful uh, to us, and you'll see exactly why in a second. All right, so we have the square root of nine times five. I'm gonna break that up as the square root of nine times the square root of five. So why is that so useful to us? Well, let's see that right now. All right, so the square root of four, so the square root of four times the square root of five, this is still our square root of 20, but when we write it this way, we can take the square root of four, and that is two, okay? So we're talking about the principal square root, i.e. the positive version of it. You don't have to put the uh, positive or negative in. There's times you need to do that, but in this particular case, the square root of four is two, so that's two times the square root of five. And the square root of nine, of course, is three, so that's gonna be three times the square root of five. So now, really, our problem distills down to the square root of 20, okay, is equivalent to two square root of five plus that square root of 45 is equivalent to three square root of five. And now you look at the square root part as like those X's and X squareds, all right? We're talking about the same things over here. So I have two square roots of five hanging out over here and I have three square roots of five over here. So all together, we just simply need to add the coefficients. So that would be five square root of five. Okay, so this is absolutely a critical skill for those of you out there that are in uh, any sort of algebra course. Again, you know, um, you know, don't look at this as saying, oh, well, hopefully I won't run into this again. You need to know how to deal with square roots. And this uh, symbol here, uh, most of you would refer to it uh, as the square root symbol, but really this is a radical in uh, mathematics like algebra because I could put a little three right there. Now we're talking about the cube root of 20 not the square root of 20. So when you study algebra, uh, your chapter or units that you're looking at, you probably have something on radical. Uh, you, you probably have something about square roots as well, but the main chapter is going to be something like radical expressions, radical equations, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a very, very important part of algebra indeed. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.